Today for Mousetrap Monday is a special day of reflection. I'm so humbled to be able to share with you the 10 year anniversary to the day since I uploaded my first video on YouTube. Now, when I first started YouTube, I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to share some of my experiences and knowledge with people on the internet. And since then, I've gained 1.5 million subscribers, received almost half a billion views, and posted over 700 videos. Now I was trying to decide what to do to mark this special anniversary and I decided to come up with a montage. So in this video, we're gonna go through the past 10 years and pick out some of the most memorable moments for me on my YouTube channel and share them with you. It's gonna be rapid fire short clips of special moments for me. Some of them are great, some of them are sad, but if you don't know my channel, when I first started out 10 years ago, I had nothing to do with mouse traps. I was actually interested in primitive technology, survival skills, experimental archeology. span So I was doing things like making arrowheads and bows, flint napping, hunting. I called my channel back then Historic Hunter, but over time it morphed into mouse traps. And I thought I'd share with you that journey. So enjoy the special clips from my YouTube channel over the past 10 years. After posting videos showing you how to make an Utsi the Iceman style bow, arrow, and quiver, I'll finish this series by showing you how he made his 5,000 year old style backpack. In a previous video, I showed you how to make the Iceman's copper blade by pouring liquid metal into a mold. In this video, we'll show you how to complete an Utsi the Iceman style axe by attaching the copper blade to a wooden handle. Many items were found with Utsi the Iceman's 5,000 year old frozen body. One of those items was a dagger. In this video, we'll show you how to make an Utsi the Iceman style dagger. So I've traveled halfway around the world to northern Italy here in the Alps because I wanted to see the spot where they found Utsi the Iceman. And he was found right up there in that pass just where that snow is on the other side. Um, and so we're going to hike up there today. I'm going to show you the path um, to go up there and see uh, the recovery site. It's about a 14 mile round trip hike and we're going to go to an elevation of just over 10,500 feet. It's going to go along a mountain ridge that uh, separates the Austrian Italian uh, border so we're gonna actually be in Austria for a part of the trip and uh, we're gonna be climbing through the snow and over the rocks so we hiked up here to the ice where they found the Iceman's body. Uh, this is the exact spot where his gear was and where he was. Old dump sites are a great place to find material to make arrowheads out of. Broken bottles and other pieces of glass flint nap just as well as obsidian, flint, and other natural rock. Another material you can use to make arrowheads out of is the porcelain from a toilet. This material is also known as johnstone. I'll show you a close-up of how you put the Adelaide dart on the throwing stick and the little spur there. Uh, but basically you just hold the dart like that and uh, you go back and you throw it. And as you throw it, uh, that extension of your arm just really lets you throw this with some power. I've completed our unseasoned ocean spray survival bow. Also made a primitive arrow here out of an ocean spray shaft and I'm ready to test this bow out. In a survival situation, it's great to have one tool where you can chop down a tree, uh, rough carve it into a bow stave, and then fine tune it as a draw knife into a finished bow. This bow could be great for getting food such as uh, rabbits and squirrels. I have a red coffee can down there which will simulate a rabbit in a survival situation. Let's see if we can get some rabbit dinner. Winner, winner, rabbit dinner. So we have our sinew bowstring on our primitive ocean spray survival bow. Also made a primitive arrow out of wild rose. Has a blunt end on it, it's perfect for hunting small animals. I love being able to go in the woods with just a few tools and making an entire bow and arrow set that would be great for hunting small animals such as rabbits or squirrels. And if you practice enough with this gear and uh, you get become a good enough shot, you can even kill a bird out of the air. That bow shoots really well. For this hunt, I found a tree located along a main trail and sat on one of the branches. It took over three days of patiently waiting before a deer finally showed up. So I shot that buck as he came from behind my tree about 20 yards. 
he went on a dead run through the side hill here and after about 30 seconds he stopped dead as can be right there between those trees that arrow killed him so fast it was amazing so I'm cutting up the meat here on that large mule deer buck I shot with the World War II rifle and I really try to use as much of the deer as possible. I don't want anything to go to waste. Other than for the little rat foot right there, uh, it just looks like meat. You wouldn't even really know what you were eating if uh, no one told you. So let's give it a taste. It's not bad at all. Rat meat is good. This Carolina Reaper has seeds and everything attached. It's just uh, the whole pepper. <sighs> Another hot pepper, similar to the, oh, I think this is a way spicier than a Trinidad Scorpion. It hits you right away. <clears throat> Those hiccups start. <sighs> the eyes water. Oh. These claws are full of meat and they're very good. You don't have to worry about the exoskeleton. You can just eat it. And uh, then you got the body here. So I'm just going to slide this off the stick. And now let's give it a taste. So here's our scorpion ready to eat. I'm going to start with the claws. You know, they're good. Our oil is now sizzling hot and it's time to place the frog legs on the oil. I love eating frog legs. The meat is really tender and flavorful. It reminds me of a cross between white flaky fish and uh, a good fried chicken wing. I wanted to see just how effective this ancient style fish hook is at catching fish. So I attached the barb to the shank using a little bit of pine pitch glue and scheduled an ocean fishing trip to test this fish hook on sea bass and lingcod. The charter boat company that we hired was very optimistic that we'd catch our limit of fish. However, this trip had several problems with it that didn't quite let me fully test the effectiveness of my ancient style of fish hooks. The first problem was that the waves started out very rough, making it difficult to film and fish at the same time. Then, soon into our trip, we noticed that there was a mechanical problem with the engine, which resulted in water pouring into the engine compartment. We were not able to slow the seawater from pouring in, and soon it became evident we were in real danger of sinking. The captain radioed a distress call, and soon we had two Coast Guard boats and a Coast Guard helicopter there to rescue us. The Paiute Deadfall is one of the most effective primitive traps that I've ever used. It is similar to the Figure 4 Deadfall, which is also very effective at catching small game. The major difference between these two traps is that a figure 4 consists of 3 sticks with notches carved into it, whereas a Paiute deadfall consists of 4 sticks and a piece of cordage. These extra components allow for a much more sensitive trigger system, which is a huge advantage when trapping small game. Today's video is going to be a little different than the ones I usually post. I thought I'd share with you some of the hate mail I get on my YouTube comment section. A little background, I started this YouTube channel just for fun to share some of the survival and primitive archery projects I was working on and was amazed uh, how much it's grown. Recently I've been getting almost a million views a month and that's been great. And it wasn't too long ago I started monetizing and selling ads and the reason I did that is one of my videos about catching mice and rats in a Paiute deadfall trap uh, went viral and it's at like two and a half million views and soon will probably be three million. And um, with that video came a lot of hate mail, uh, people just saying nasty, terrible things. And I figured if I was going to be having to deal with uh, people that were saying such horrible things, I might as well get paid for it. My all-time favorite hate mail uh, came from a 10-year-old girl named Piper. I hate you, Sean Woods, in all capital letters. You, you killed a harmless rat and killed mice. If I was an animal god, I would strike you with lightning and boy would it hurt. I will not even like or subscribe this video. I hate you. You are dead to me. Why did God even bring you onto this planet? If I see another video of yours about rats and mice, I will kick you in the butt. 
I'm going to be doing a new video posting schedule on my YouTube channel. It's going to be called Mouse Trap Mondays, and every Monday I'm going to load two new videos featuring different traps that catch mice and rats. In the mail today, I received this package. This is a little trinket that YouTube gives certain creators for reaching milestones. This is the silver play button for getting 100,000 subscribers. And uh, you get one for a million and 10 million, but that's a ways off. Wow, thank you so much. This week has been really exciting and humbling for me, watching my YouTube channel grow. Recently, I've been watching that subscriber button click up, and yesterday we reached the 1 million subscriber mark. That is just incredible, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're gonna review the Rolling Log Mousetrap. This is a very simple design. It's just a metal cylinder that rotates along a center rod. Today for Mousetrap Monday, I have another really old style mousetrap to show you. This is called Walk the Plank Mousetrap, so you can take care of your mice pirate style. In today's video, I'm going to destroy a very dangerous ground yellow jacket nest using dry ice. Okay, you can see the ground yellow jacket nest. There's some guards right at the entrance ready to attack anything that comes along. I'm just going to very calmly place the dry ice right there on the entrance. <laughs> My brother's neighbors think I'm so weird. The yellow jackets are everywhere and they really want this bait. We already have several in here and they're already dropping in the bucket. Let's let this sit here a little while and see how many we get. It's been three hours since we set up these traps and we have some really good results. Let's go ahead and count and see what the final numbers are. In our homemade trap, we caught 790 yellow jackets. That can really reduce numbers in a hurry, especially if you set up several traps. Today for Mouse Trap Monday, we're gonna test out a really simple idea for catching mice. Now I'm assuming the mice will come, be curious, jump down in the little bowl, be caught in the oil, they'll get all slippery, they'll try to get out, try to jump, they can't. Then in the morning, we can see what we have. For today's episode of Mouse Trap Monday, I'm going to show you one of the craziest traps that's ever been invented. This Civil War era mouse trap consists of a wooden mouse with two razor sharp spring loaded harpoons that come shooting out its eyes. I'll show you step by step how to build it and then we're going to test it out in the barn and we'll feed the mice that we caught to wild animals at the beaver dam. So make sure you watch to the end because this is a really good episode. Fire in the hole! Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to test out one of the craziest and most requested mousetraps that I've ever been asked to feature. It's a mouse cannon with a trigger right in front of the barrel. It's called the original 1862 Mouse Killer. Well, that was a very small amount of powder, but our poor mouse didn't fare too well. He's pretty charred. Here's our rat trap. It's a really simple design. It's basically a bunch of sharp metal spikes that form a funnel. Wow, that was quick. It's kind of a tight squeeze, but she can't get out. Today for Mouse Trap Monday, I'm excited to show you one of the all time best traps I've ever found for catching rats. This is my pet rat. He's pretty friendly, but wild rats are destructive, they're smart, and they're notoriously difficult to catch. Then when they come along like normal to feed, they'll hit that bait station and get dunked. They'll end up in the cage below and it'll reset for the next rat.
Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're gonna do something I've never been able to do before. We're gonna catch a mole in a live trap. Come on out of there. What a fascinating animal. Its fur is some of the softest I've ever felt. Now he's pretty fast above ground, but everything about him is designed for living underground. He has powerful front paws with those huge claws. He can dig through the dirt so fast, he can basically swim through loose soil, making tunnels, searching for food. So here's our bear grease or bear lard. I'm gonna use this in a lot of different recipes and cooking. I'm gonna make some pies out of it. Okay, so it's 4th of July here, and one of our favorite things to do during 4th of July is it's pie baking time. And there's fresh berries available, and it's a perfect time to bake a pie. And we're actually gonna to use today um, bear lard, which, is really hard to come by if you don't know someone that hunts but thankfully my husband hunts and rendered this bear lard and if you have if you'd like to know how that's done there will be a, a link to that video in the description so first we'll start with our bear lard which is a half a cup of bear lard that's been frozen and it's in a lot of different small little chunks so that will puree really nicely and so we'll just let it cool and then take it to the party that we're going to this evening my mommy makes the best pie ever. <laughs> Sorry. I've never tasted Nutria meat before, so we're going to give it a try. So our Nutria looks a little different than last time you saw it. This is the hind saddle, the best cut of meat. You can see the tail, but otherwise, it's a pretty white meat, almost like rabbit. Please. More Nutria, please. Here you go. Thank you. How does your Nutria taste? Good. Good? Kind of tastes like chicken? Mm -hmm. High five. <laughs> High five again. People want to know if I'm okay, if something's happened, so I thought I'd share what my family and I have gone through in the last week. So basically, a week ago, my worst nightmare came true. There was a man's voice on the other end saying, um, Sir, your family has been in a horrible car accident, and no one should be alive. We just pulled your wife out of the car, and I didn't know if my family was okay. I kept asking if my kids were okay. My three kids were with her in our car. I am just freaking out inside. It's like someone kicked you in the stomach, dropped you to your knees, and you're having trouble breathing. They let us back in the emergency room, and I went from the... Worst moment in my life, the lowest moment in my life, to the best. That scene, my wife and three kids all in the room, uh, they gave me a smile and they looked like they were going to be okay. I've been receiving a lot of comments and questions from people wondering why I didn't post a video last week. And the reason is, we were a little busy. A week ago, my daughter was born. This is baby Ruby. We are so excited. I now have two sons and two daughters. Well, after seeing all those clips, you can see my path on YouTube has not been a straight path, a very windy one, taking me through different subjects, through highs and lows. But obviously, I do this for family. I love sharing my experiences with the fans, and I love making videos. So thank you so much for all your support and continue to watch. I don't know how long I'm gonna be doing YouTube videos in the future, hopefully another 10 years and longer. If you haven't subscribed, please consider clicking that button. I've posted over 700 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you want to see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, how to eat weird stuff, how to catch animals, how to survive, how to make bows, stay tuned. Here's the rat heart and the rat balls. The heart tastes like heart and the balls are, they just taste like meat. They're not too bad. I'd eat them again. Mmm, rat balls.